Over 98% of the world's population lives within territories where the CWC has become the law of the land. The CWC stands for the Chemical Weapons Convention, which comprises a preamble, 24 articles, and three annexes. The three annexes are the Annex on Chemicals, the Verification Annex, and the Confidentiality Annex. These gases and poisonous substances are extremely dangerous and can be deadly if placed into the wrong hands. Since this is true, chemical weaponry should be banned in rogue countries that have a bad reputation for using chemical weapons. There are still stockpiles in a few main countries, the United States, Russia, India, Iraq, Japan, Libya, Syria, some non-CWC states, Israel, and North Korea. The US, Russia, India, and Japan are the only countries not considered rogue. The only reason why the United States is allowed to stockpile much larger amounts of these uh, WMDs is because they have not used them in war. All other listed countries have. Chemical weapons, as comprised in the CWC, are considered to be unsafe and inhumane. The gas used in the concentration camps of the Holocaust was called Zyklon B. It's a chemical weapon. Chlorine used by the Germans in World War I was also a chemical weapon. Even tear gases used today by most countries are chemical weapons. The proper name for a chemical weapon is a WMD. WMD stands for Weapons of Mass Destruction. That means they can do mass amounts of damage to large amounts of land. Chemical weapons are chemical agents, whether gaseous, liquid, or solid, that are employed because of the direct toxic effects on humans, animals, and plants. They inflict damage when inhaled, absorbed through the skin, or ingested in food or drink. Chemical agents become weapons when they are placed into artillery shells, landmines, aerial bombs, missile warheads, mortar shells, grenades, spray tanks, and any other form of battlefield placement. As I mentioned before, the Chemical Weapons Convention, which was created in 1993, is the most recent arms control agreement within the force of international law. According to CBS Online Interactive, the ISIS party has begun to use chemical weapons on its own prisoners. Moroccan officials have released that they have found out about an Islamic unit completely devoted to the making and processing of chemical weaponry. As I have mentioned before, ISIS and ISIL have been carefully watched as they are said to be in possession of newly developed chemical weaponry. This poses a serious threat to the world as these parties do not fully identify themselves with the country, they are spread out all across the globe. As long as these rogue nations are still in possession of chemical weaponry, the world will remain an unsafe place. According to armscontrol.org, the United States has declared a large chemical arsenal of 27,771 metric tons to the OPCW after the CWC came into the force in 1997. Along with Russia, the United States received an extension when it was unable to complete destruction of its chemical stockpiles by 2012. As of August 2013, the United States has destroyed nearly 25,000 metric tons of chemical agents. The United States Army believes that the destruction will be completed by the year 2023. On the other hand, Russia has also agreed to destroy its 40,000 metric tons of chemical agents, including VX, Sarin, Soman, Mustard, Luitse, Mustard, Luitse mixtures, and Phosgene. They have the largest stockpile in the entire world. President Barack Obama and many other countries' officials have made this threat aware to the world and are working to destroy as much of these chemical agents as possible. The first full-scale deployment of deadly chemical weaponry was during World War I at the Second Battle of Ypres on April 22, 1915, when the Germans attacked the French, Canadian, and Algerian troops with chlorine gas. Deaths were light, though casualties were relatively heavy. During World War II, Japan was the only country to use chemical weapons on the battlefield. Adolf Hitler, however, refrained from the use of chemical weapons in war, though not from the use of poison gases in concentration camps. This is likely because of his fear of reprisals in kind. In 1991, the nation of Iraq experienced a series of uprisings because the president, Saddam Hussein, had gone into two very unnecessary wars, one invading Kuwait and the other the Iran-Iraq War. The president used chemical weaponry to subside the people and tried to put down the revolution.
As I have mentioned before, the United States planned to have all of its chemical weapons completely eradicated by the year 2023. As countries such as the United States and Russia plan to completely eradicate their chemical weapons, other ISIS and ISIL-influenced states plan to build up their arsenal even more rather than take it away. In the near future, officials say that the system of warfare between rogue nations and other countries could very well possibly change from guns and bullets to chemical and biological weapons and gases. This would highly increase the casualty rate as well as cause more tension and prolonged fighting. The best way to keep this from happening is to be rid of most all chemical weapons in the world today. In conclusion, chemical weaponry is very dangerous and should be banned in rogue nations. The best way to keep the world safe from these attacks is to crack down on the terrorist groups building their arsenals of chemical weaponry up. Completely eliminating this threat would allow the world to take a deep breath and focus on the many other important issues at hand. The Organization for the Prohibition of Chemical Weapons, OPCW, works with the United Nations. It was established in the Hague, Netherlands in 1997. Its purpose is to ensure that chemical weapon stockpiles are destroyed and that CW precursors are tracked and monitored to prevent the rogue development of chemical weapons. Although there are currently 189 member states in the OPCW, Syria is not one of them. Syria deliberately chose not to join the OPCW and has not been held accountable for its chemical weapon arsenal in the past 16 years. Since this is true, it is a prime example of why rogue nations should be accountable and why they should not be able to produce chemical weapons.